Okay, so the G23 series has been with us for five years. And I think it is safe to say that the model has been a successful one from BMW. Whether it has eclipsed that of the F30, that remains to be seen. But what we can say for sure is that seeing how little BMW fiddled with the facelift, it tells us that they are operating with a mindset that, okay, let's not mess about too much with something that we know works. So we know customers like the G23 series, and we see a lot of these on the road. It's just that every time when I see a G20, and particularly the 330i M Sport, I always find myself asking this one question. How the hell do you tahan the ride? So in today's video, one of the biggest, biggest questions that I ask of the 3 Series facelift here is have they improved on the ride quality of the 330i M Sport? Because in my opinion, that is the one singular weakness of the G20 that stops it from being very good to really great. Okay, so let's start from the back. There seem to be very minimal changes that were implemented here. The tail lights, in particular, seem no different from the pre facelift model. And this is quite unusual practice from BMW. Usually, when they facelift one of their cars, the tail lights is one of the first areas where they will make some changes to give that differentiation between the pre and post facelift models. But here in this G20 facelift, from what I can see, it looks exactly like the pre-facelift car. But nevertheless, the red illumination area here, the way it bulges out to give that three-dimensional effect, I think there is a design element that has worked very well for the G20 and BMW has been wise to preserve this element. Now, where they have done more work is down here at the bumpers where this being the M Sport trim, the diffuser elements now gain greater prominence. You can see that it has a more distinctive shape and it occupies more of the rear bumper's surface area. So it gives rise to a more aggressive overall appearance. Now, of course, the exhaust configuration, this dual exhaust configuration, this is now standard in all the four-cylinder BMW models starting from the 20i variants upwards. Previously, this one exhaust aside configuration used to be reserved for the 35i's and above, but now here, beginning with the G20, G30, they have made this sort of like, you know, the standard appearance across the board. Okay, now coming to the side, well, the one thing that BMW quite thankfully fixed with the 330i M Sport is the rims. Because remember, the 330i M Sport, when it first came into Malaysia, those M multi-spoke rims, looks very meh. But these five-spoke M alloy wheels, well, they at least look more pleasing to the eye, more sporty in its design. And this being the 330i, you get the enhanced M performance brakes. You see, whereas, remember, although the G20 now comes standard with M Sport trim in Malaysia, the 320i and the 330e, they don't get the M performance brakes. That is only available in the 330i, and that means the 330i, you not only get superior performance, but you also get better brakes. Now, one thing about the G20 that never seemed to gel well with me is this plastic piece because it's as if as they came up with this silhouette, they drew the window line and then somehow, you know, the engineers could not agree to get the Hofmeister King to align properly with the door. But here's the funny thing, when you open this door and you look at the shape, 
from the inside you can see that actually it is quite an aggressive design so i don't know maybe theophilus chin if you are watching this you may want to take up the challenge and try and see how the g20 would look like if they were to delete this piece and would instead to refine the, the rear door to just flow with the frame proper also another thing you look from the side you can see that there's this character line here that runs along the underside of the body and it comes up here now you see this is something interesting the way this comes up in the g30 there is a decorative air vent here but this line here suggests that maybe bmw was toying with the idea of putting a vent here and then decided not to and they left that character line there so of course the 330i being the m sport version you get the m sport badge here keyless entry as you would expect is standard but a quick check here at the rear door you see that all four doors have keyless entry so it means that as long as you're having the key fob you can access the car from any door and in any case since the g20 like all new bmws have walk away auto door lock the car will just lock and unlock itself as you walk further and further away from it so here in the front is where bmw did the bulk of their redesign work on the g20 facelift and they really addressed what to me was one of my biggest sore points with the g20 the headlights now i like that with the pre-facelift model what they did they had that little kink at the middle here to remind us of the BMW E46, a tribute to its years gone by. What I did not appreciate, however, was that if you were to park a G20 with laser lights next to another one with LED lights, it is very clear which guy paid lesser money for lower grade headlights. But now, here in the facelift model, these LED headlamps they look the part but in any case with the facelift bmw actually came to the decision to drop laser lights from the 3 series altogether and focused on putting just a very good set of led headlights perhaps they came to the conclusion that most buyers in the 3 series segment did not want to pay the premium for laser lights but to me that's beyond the point the point is i always believe that with headlights especially in the premium car segment the mid-tier option should not be made to look significantly worse than the top tier option so right now here in the facelift model that comes with led lights as standard i say the design they have went for a safer route now the bottom here it's now fully flattened and it just has a very simple double c shaped look so if you were to give me a choice i would have liked that they if they were to keep that kink here in the middle but they put this new uh, lighting signature that really would be perfect but otherwise i like this redesign overall for the simple reason that the led headlights now no longer look like the cheap option now you come to the middle you can see they have also kept the shape of the double kidney grills largely unchanged it has a bit more prominence because the loaves actually jut out when you look at it from the side here it pops out with a bit of a three-dimensional effect and these active shutters so when you are stationary or when you perhaps need the aerodynamics more than you need the airflow this will close and it has a nice satin chrome finish here to really give it that look of sporty plus premium so the bumpers here also you can see that they have given it a very aggressive angle a lot of angles going on here the side here has that light, light look and also the middle part here has the sort of like a hexagonal trapezoidal shape that gives it a look of aggression a look of sportiness and overall i say in a way this face has lost a bit of the pre-facelift car's uniqueness but for the sake of these nicer looking headlamps i think the overall effect is that the g20 lci from the front is now an um, overall more handsome looking car so the funny story with the g20 this is actually 
the most spacious 3 Series ever and yet BMW saw it fit to not only give us this but also include a long wheelbase version as well. I mean, look at this in its standard wheelbase form. There is so much of leg room in front of me that's like eight inches of leg room easily spacious okay and the backrest i've got good lean angle seat cushion also has fantastic thigh support and really mean fantastic because as i put my feet down on the floor my thighs are nicely supported from below so it means that this right here at the back it's a very comfortable place to be in for a long distance drive and looking at other parts of the car now this particular example that we are testing here it's finished in all black so it does not paint the car in an especially flattering light the earlier examples pre-facelift models that i've driven those with the vanaska orange finish those were gorgeous this is all black now nah, doesn't really do the cabin any justice for me so looking at the rest of the seat here's the seat pattern here very plain simple seat pattern isofix mounts here so this is a hinged lid showing the isofix mounts and now as i mentioned earlier the seats have split folding the middle passenger belt is mounted on the parcel shelf so we have the need for a secondary buckle as well, alongside the main buckle here to in order to buckle the middle passenger armrest down here with uh, little cup holders okay and here rear aircon vents so you've got two usb-c ports here and also rear zone climate control both seats have uh, netted pockets and the door card here you've got this nice satin chrome trim pattern and here as well so nice geometric shapes going on here but once again quite a waste that the door card does not have a contrast trim but otherwise you know overall good selection materials here here soft touch soft touch even down here as well slightly harder but it's still not a nasty grade of plastics it's still softish kind of touch and the door pocket here there's this angle slot here for you to throw your bottle in and also at the back here this space also offers plenty of storage so now we head to the front so let's get things started up front here now this is where things get a little controversial don't they so this is new generation bmw this is five years ago bmw and here's the thing the reality is that the g20 was a product of the previous decade and now it is being facelifted for the 2020s and this dashboard architecture was obviously not designed with this wide screen in mind so when you look at this whole part here it's a mix it's a collision of elements past and future down here we see they have rejigged the whole control scheme the climate controls the memory buttons all gone this is now just left the volume the hazard lights the windscreen demisters forward and rewind button that's it everything all the climate control things are moved into this screen here now here this instrument cluster um i honestly am not a big fan of this because now, I, I'm not going to tell you that, oh, you know, back in the days of the E39 or E34, no. Everybody has to change with the times. BMW as a car company has to change with the times. You can't stick with the old formula forever. But, you see, the philosophy that governed the old designs, which is the clarity, the intuitiveness in reading these instruments, in operating the cars, are no longer present here it's like this screen here the the graphic elements here a lot of it are just placed here for the sake of being there i mean where is the logic of stacking your rev counter and your speedometer in this weird fashion there isn't i i can't fathom it so the thing is that 
BMW got off to a good start on their full LCD cluster back in the time of the F10 facelift and somehow they just never managed to get better. The cluster that they introduced in the pre-LCI G20 that was already not very good and now they came up with this. Oh man, I don't get this. If there is one pain point that I have to pick with this car, this is it. The good news however is that because this is a full LCD, we can hang on to the hope perhaps that one day BMW may come to their senses and think that okay this is not going to work, they're going to revamp it and all you have to do is just do a software upgrade and ta, a more sensible display can be replaced here. So there's one advantage of it being digital cluster. If let's say you want to make wholesale changes to the interface of a car, you can do it with little to no cost. Okay, so now come back to the screen here. Let's explore some of the functions available. So we are going to the home screen. Now we're going to go to this one, my BMW. We're going to vehicle apps. And I'm just going to show you some of the functions available here in this car. Driving settings. We look at driver assistance. Now it is from this screens. We can see clearly what are the safety features built into this car. So here we have collision warning. We have lane departure warning. You also have steering intervention to go with the lane departure warning if you so prefer. You have lane change warning and you have drowsiness detection. You have speed warning so you can set the speed limit as you like. There's also park assist. You have cross traffic alert so it means that to warn you when you reverse out of a parking lot if there's an oncoming car. Automatic PDC activation because PDC is park distance control. It's BMW speak for parking sensors. Lah. This car comes with reverse camera so you can choose the markings that appear on the parking sensor diagram as well as the reverse camera picture. Driving, speed assistant and also feedback wire steering wheel. The steering wheel vibrates when things like the blind spot monitor or your lane departure warning, all that is triggered, it triggers a vibration in the steering wheel. Now another thing I want to show you is this drivetrain and chassis and when you go to the individual modes this is where you can adjust the steering drivetrain which is the engine as well as the transmission that's it these are all the only three parameters that you can adjust why because this car does not have an adaptive suspension but as I would explain later in the video when doing my driving review, uh, the later batches of the 330i M Sport after this test car comes with the added option of adaptive M suspension. This particular car comes with passive suspension, but later versions of the 330i M Sport, you do get adaptive suspension. Now, I forgot to mention this screen has touch function and you see this flat surface here. This is actually useful because it allows you to rest your fingers whilst you operate the screen on the move. The graphics, I would say, are crisp, are nice, and they respond well to movements of your fingers. So now coming down here, you can see there is this lid that opens up inside here. There's a wireless charging tray. The surface itself is rubberized, so your phone does not slide about. You've got one USB port here, cup holders, 12 volt socket, and this is the iDrive control pad. Here is the driving modes. And this is where you control things like the stability control, parking sensors, auto start stop. And this is where I really, really reserve my judgment because not too long ago, BMW produced one of the best gear shifters in the business, the best to hold gear shifters in the business. Now it's just this, my God. This is so unsatisfying to operate. Eh? From something that you can grip nicely, fits within your palm, now it's just this. What the hell? <laughs> uh, here, this bay here. So inside here, this is also rubberized. There's a light here and you've got a USB-C port here for you to charge your devices. Since we are here, just to show you, the reverse camera gives nice crisp graphics. So you've got the markings here. You don't have 360 degree camera, but that's fine. What you do have here is that you have this diagram to additionally show you the readings from the parking sensors. Overall, this dashboard, this whole dashboard architecture here, I would say it's solid. The elements don't come together as well simply because it's a mix 
of past and future design elements. It is because of the time that the G20 was launched, it was like at the end of the F-Series era, but it is now at the dawn of the next generation electrified era. The G20 sort of existed in between. And as a result, you can see the mix of elements in this dashboard. You can see that the G20 is a car that really straddles between two eras. So my overall verdict on just the cabin alone, build quality is good. Material selection is good. Color scheme, I think they can be a bit more adventurous. But uh, the, the usability, the layout, you know, I'm still a bit mixed on that. This video is brought to you by Evo Club Car Wash. Our motto is service and solutions. You can bring your car to us for deep cleaning, shining, full-on restoration, or just a regular wash. Whatever it is you need help sorting out on your car, we are more than happy to assist. To get in touch with us, drop us a line on Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp us on the number on your screen now. So the G20 LCI range in Malaysia consists of no fewer than six variants. It starts with the 320i and it goes all the way up to the other end of the spectrum with two variants of the M340i. There's also the 330e, there's also the long wheelbase 330li and here today we are testing the mid-range 330i which I believe on paper at least is perhaps the sweet spot of the range. It's perhaps the version of the 3 series that most people will go after because as much as we feel the M340i is the best version of the 3 series there are still quite a lot of people who are not keen to pay that 2000 ringgit per year of road tax and even though BMW has upgraded the 320i now to M Sport spec well there are still people who don't want to be seen specking the lowest variant of the range and there's also the worry of plug-in hybrids yada 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 so the 330i really is the best of all world's options except that based on our experience with the pre-facelift model the 330i has one very big caveat and that is the m sport suspension you see when we tested the pre-facelift 330i for the very first time and that was at that time bmw launched the g20 with only that one variant we found that wow firstly performance was fantastic this b48 engine really pulls like it is the end of the world but the biggest shock that we got was really shocking the ride was anywhere depending on your choice of words you can call it stiff you can call it firm you can call it a bit harsh some would say terrible but basically it felt more like a civic fd2r than a bmw 3 series and remember that's a bit of a problem because the 3 series today for many of its buyers is a primary car or in some cases maybe even that person's only car so when you give it a harsh ride it makes the car a tiresome preposition to be used as a day-to-day -day driver and that is a problem. Now I know from experience that with later batches of the 330i, BMW progressively softened the suspension setup by small margins but they softened it, they made it more comfortable. I experienced this firsthand because one of my customers actually kindly asked me to take his car for a spin and give him my opinions and I can tell you from that drive it did feel that BMW improved the ride and what did that tell us? It means that BMW themselves knew that with the original setup of the 330i M Sport they went too far in dialing the stiffness and sportiness of the suspension. So when they introduced this 330 LCI, even though on the spec sheet it showed that the car is sitting on passive M Sport suspension, I had a little bit of hope in me that 
they know of the complaints with the pre-LCI suspension and they would have done the necessary to address it. Well, I can tell you from my experience driving this car thus far, they have made it more comfortable. They have softened the sharp edges of the ride. But have they done enough to make it a genuinely comfortable car? Well, no. You see, they have softened the edges, but fact remains, when you go over undulations, you go over ripples, the suspension still transmits a large amount of the harshnesses from the surface to the cabin. So even though this ride quality right now is more bearable than the pre-facelift model, you still have to brace yourself for quite a busy ride when you're going over less than perfect terrain. So it's improved, but not by the margins that we were hoping for. So this puts into perspective one thing. Now, when this 330i LCI was launched, it was priced at 317,800 ringgit, 317. Then BMW revised the pricing upwards to 319,000, 319, an additional 2,000 ringgit, but with one crucial adjustment. The car now gets adaptive M suspension and that changes the equation completely. Now, the test car that I am reviewing here, this one comes still with the passive suspension and therefore, whatever verdict that I can deliver to you with regards to the car on adaptive M suspension is conjectural at best. But if I am to base it on my experience with the pre-facelift M340i, then I can quite safely say the 2000 ringgit premium to upgrade from this to the M adaptive suspension, it's worth every penny. I mean, think of it this way. It's less than a month of your car installments and you get a significantly better ride. You get a car that I would say overall is a much more complete package. You see, because the thing is this, the right quality aside, everything else about the 330i is just perfect. It, it, this car just ticks all the boxes that you would want from a premium compact car. You see, the engine is powerful enough. I mean, yeah, the old fashioned amongst us will still talk BMW six cylinder, but if you evaluate it purely from an objective point of view, this B48 engine delivers all the punch you need for day-to-day -day driving. It is fast enough in any occasion you can think of on road. It is fuel efficient enough. It even sounds nice. So in every objectively measurable way, this 30i engine is really all the engine you need in a modern premium luxury car. It is, make no mistake, this engine is a big quantum leap over the N20 engine it replaces. Because think about this, BMW never saw fit to put the N20 in the 7 Series. But the B48 engine, this is the first four-cylinder engine ever to power a 7 Series. It is the first four-cylinder engine ever to power a Toyota Supra. So this engine really is creme de la creme in the world of two-liter turbos. Size-wise, yes, people say that the new G20 now is as big as a 5 Series from the past. It's true, but look at it this way. It means that this is now a car that you can use for really all occasions. This is now a car with enough space to qualify as a proper family car. You can use this for your business setting, your personal setting, for your weekend gunting runs. Any occasion, 
the 3 Series is there, it is ready to spring into action and serve your needs. It will serve your most mundane of needs. It will serve your most exciting of needs. This, I would argue, is perhaps the most capable, most talented, most all-rounded 3 Series of all time. And I mean all time, you go back to the E21, E30, E36, E46, E90, F30, the G20 here, this is the best all-rounder ever in the 3 Series lineage. So the verdict on the G20 LCI, well, styling-wise, I think BMW has done a good job. This new car looks, in my opinion, from the outside, more handsome than the predecessor. The interior, a bit of a mixed bag because let's put it this way, this dashboard here with its mix of new generation and old generation design elements, some of these elements really, they don't seem to gel and match that well. So that's a bit of a mixed bag because there are some elements here that are being shoehorned into a dashboard that was not designed to accommodate it in the first place. And the driving experience, judging from the 330i alone, we have not experienced the other variants, but from the 330i alone, they have made improvements to the ride comfort uh, in the context of the passive M suspension experience in this test car not by enough of a margin but if the m adaptive suspension is what we expect it is that 2000 ringgit price increase over the version that i'm testing here that gap is well earned and really it's a no-brainer to pay for it it is an absolute no-brainer to pay for it so i would rate the 3 Series here, this new G23 Series, on the basis of the 330i M Sport, which is, I would think, is would be BMW's main selling variant, a good 9 out of 10, with that last 1 out of 10 subtracted, simply because they did not refine this passive suspension well enough. And that is slightly infuriating because with the pre facelift G20, 320i non-M Sport, they already, already have a sweet handling passive suspension there and they did not utilize it. But that aside, minor complaint. And I think if you are shopping for the G20 3 Series, this remains a highly compelling option in its market segment. I have not personally experienced the Mercedes C-Class to conclusively say it's the best, but the 3 Series here definitely remains as good as it ever was. This is no doubt the best 3 Series of all time. It will be best, of course, if you can go straight for the M340i, but if you don't have the appetite for that 3-liter engine, well, this 330i here will, I believe, serve the needs of many of you. Just pay that 2,000 ringgit extra for the adaptive M suspension or if you are already on a unit with this passive suspension, consider going with non-run flat tires. So that's it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. And if you have not done so, please subscribe to my channel. Your support helps keep me going so that I can continue to produce new and informative content for your benefit and especially if you want to know immediately when i release a new video click the notification bell and of course do also check out the channels of my other horizon team members as well and remember if you have car buying questions if you have car maintenance questions you need advice on car care bobby tana thomas and myself we are live every monday night to answer all these questions live on Facebook and on YouTube. So also, and of course, if you need your cars clean or detailed or polished, hit us up, Evo Club Car Wash, here are our contact details. Get in touch with our team and find out what are the latest 
offers and promotions or how we can assist you with the care and cleaning up of your car so that's it from me today until my next video take care stay safe and i will see you soon